So now I am going to describe about the free living amoeba. Under the seasonal infections, uh, sometimes uh, in the universities, a question is asked under uh, in the short notes form uh, about the free living amoeba. So it is important to know about those free living amoeba which cause the infection in humans sometimes. Another that is the opportunistic infections in the humans. So free living amoeba are the small amoebas which are present in the soil, water, and can cause the opportunistic infections as I have discussed, as I have told. So this free living amoeba can cause the opportunistic infection. Now there in the environment there are many many thousands or uh, lakhs of free living amoeba. Out of those only four free living amoebas are important from the human point of view. Uh, I mean from a human infection point of view. So those four uh, important free living amoebas are the Nagularia fowleri, the Acanth amoeba species, the Bellamutia mandrillaris and the Sapenia species. So please remember these names, these names of the free living amoebas. These are the four free living amoebas which are important from human infection point of view. So what are the infections caused by these free living amoebas, these four free living amoebas. So the infections or the diseases which are caused by these four free living amoebas are the primary amoebic meningoencephalitis PAM. So Negraria fowleri causes the PAM. While the acanth amoeba, the acanth amoeba causes the granulomatous amoebic encephalitis GAE and also causes amoebic keratitis. While the Bellamutia, the Bellamutia causes the GAE, granulomatous amoebic encephalitis, and the Sapenia species causes also encephalitis. The infection caused by these uh, these free living amoebas are uh, very difficult to treat and they very often result into death of the person who gets infection from this free living amoeba. So it is a very dangerous uh, infection that occurs by this free living amoeba. So coming to the life cycle and the pathogenesis of the free living amoebas. So let's see here that they exist in different forms. All the ever mentioned free living amoeba have two stages that is the trophozoite stage and the cyst stage. They all of them, all of those four have two stages that is the trophozoite stage and the cyst stage. Now the infective form is the trophozoite stage. Okay, as we have seen in other parasitic infections, uh, here also the infective form is the trophozoite stage. And the mode of transmission is by the inhalation of the trophozoite stage of the free living amoeba. So free living amoeba ka jo trophozoite stage hota hai, usko inhalation karne se free living amoeba ka infection ho jata hai. Now we have to see how does that inhalation occur. Okay. So when uh, when uh, we know that the uh, free living amoebas are present in the environment, in the soil, in the water, in the air. So uh, these free living amoebas are present, these trophozoites are also present in the water. Now, when the human swim in that water, when a person is going to swim in a uh, stagnant water, then what happens is that there is infection by that free living amoeba by inhalation from the water. Okay, now that causes uh, that involves the olfactory nerve, infection of the olfactory nerve occurs and there occurs the neural spread there occurs the neural spread now through that olfactory nerve that infection from the free living amoeba reaches to the brain and in the brain it causes the pam and then the following that death occurs so this is the pathogenesis of the negleria fowleri infection now let's see about the acanth amoeba species infection so uh, in that there also there is free living trophozoites in the water and when there uh, a human goes to swim in that water stagnant water then there is human infection through the eyes so when the uh, infection occurs through the eyes then that causes the amoebic keratitis but if that uh, trophozoite gets inhaled by that person while swimming in that stagnant water or the pond then that infection again through uh, again uh, as per the I mean uh, like the Negleria infection here also the uh, infection by inhalation is spreads to brain so that causes spread to the brain and when that spreads to brain there occurs GAE granulometer amoeba encephalitis amoebic encephalitis and that is followed by death so that's how this is a very dangerous situation okay so death 
occurs that is death is certain in all these cases so that's why this diseases becomes very important okay now talking about the lab diagnosis how are we go how are we going to diagnose this condition so for diagnosis of course we have to first collect the specimen and the specimen of choice is csf because all of these uh, free living amoebas are mostly causing this brain infection either encephalitis or meningitis so we have to collect the csf and after death of course we can take the brain biopsy to diagnose uh, after death as well so uh, we take the specimen and we store the storage is very important in these infections I and mean, in these uh, free living amoebas so the examination should be done immediately otherwise we have to do the refrigeration uh, i mean refrigeration should not be done in these cases okay so immediate uh, immediate uh, examination of the csf should be carried out refrigeration is strictly contraindicated in the case of the free living amoeba samples next we do the csf microscopy so we have collected collected the uh, the csf and then we try to detect the trophozoites in weight mount preparation of the csf so with the csf we make a weight mount over a uh, glass slide and then we examine it under the microscope okay uh, other than that we have histopathology so as i described the brain biopsy can also be taken as a specimen or as a sample so that can also be stained with the uh, h and e stain um, like in the pathology so uh, that is that may be used to demonstrate the trophozoites of the free living amoeba plus we can do the culture as well so csf specimen can be inoculated on the non nutrient agar now this is very important point here non nutrient till now we have uh, seen the nutrient agar only now this is the non nutrient agar with bacterial supplements like e coli okay so uh, in these in, in this type of uh, culture media also we can culture the these free living amoebas plus the balamutia can be cultured on the cell lines okay like the viruses iske alawa we have got the molecular methods the molecular methods uh, uh, include the multiplex real time pcr which is used for identification and detection of the organism or we can also use the imaging methods like ct scan mri to detect the lesion in the brain but death is certain so there is no treatment available that is the reason behind the death there is no effective treatment available for the free living amoeba infections okay but we give a combination of drugs like the fluconazole pentamethylene and protericin so these are some of the drugs which are given but of course the death is certain in these conditions caused by the free living amoeba so this is all about the free living amoeba that is sometimes asked in the as a short note in the university exams so i thought i should uh, discuss it with you all so that is all about the free living amoeba which is uh, infection that you will find in the under the cns infections